until I finish grading that test. So anyway, here's what we're looking at. Chapter two was all about motion. Chapter three is going to be all about forces. So forces are the things that cause motion to change. We have five definitions to write down today. Here's our first. <coughs> Force. Force is, excuse me. A quantity that describes the strength of a push or a pull. Parentheses. Measured in Newtons which is kind of like pounds. Force is a quantity that describes the strength of a push or a pull. It's measured in newtons, and that's kind of like pounds. <coughs> so you guys have talked about pounds at some point in your life. Basically, the weight of yourself in pounds it's the amount of force that gravity is pulling you down with. That's what your weight is. It's the amount of force that gravity is pulling you down with. Um, but pounds is more, it's not a very scientific, it's not good for science in general. So we use something called Newtons, which is a little more precise, a little more deliberately chosen. So that's force. Our other definition, our second of our five definitions today is net force. The word net just means sum, so our net force is the sum of all forces. So sometimes I'll ask you to calculate force, sometimes I'll ask you to calculate net force, and if you know all the forces, this one's really easy to calculate. For example, maybe the force of gravity is pulling down on somebody with 400 newtons. That's maybe, I don't know, 100 or so pounds. Gravity is pulling down on them with 400 newtons of force, and the ground pushes up on them with 400 newtons of force. The sum of those forces would be 400 minus 400. 400 plus negative 400. And the reason this one's negative is because it's pointing down. So the net force in this case is zero newtons. We have no net force. But maybe one is larger than the other. Maybe you've got a skydiver. Maybe the same person is skydiving. Gravity is pulling down on them with 400 newtons, but air resistance is only pushing up with 80 newtons of force. This would probably be near the beginning of their fall. In this case, F net would be 80 minus 400. So that would be negative 320. We call this a non-zero net force. And that's all you really need to know about net force today. In junior high, you probably learned about Newton's laws. They talk about balanced and unbalanced forces. This is a balanced force because they cancel each other out. This is an, a set of unbalanced forces because 
they're not fully canceling one another out. So we'd say this is balanced and this is unbalanced. But here is the important definition of the day. Newton's first law. Newton's first law. Now you probably learned a definition in junior high where they say an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an unbalanced force. We could say that in a more we can we can say that in a more precise way. Um, and we'll say it like this. So we can say that in a more precise way. Instead of saying an object in motion stays in motion or an object at rest stays at rest, we're going to talk about the velocity so that we can actually use numbers here. All objects maintain a constant velocity, parentheses, speed and direction and I'm gonna stop there there's a lot there's a little more to write but it says all objects in all objects maintain a constant velocity that means if it's at rest it stays at rest if it's a velocity of zero if it has a velocity of zero it'll keep that velocity at zero if it has a velocity of 40 meters per second it'll keep that velocity of 40 meters per second unless acted upon by a non-zero net force, an unbalanced force. That's what they mean when they say unbalanced force. All objects maintain a constant velocity unless acted upon by a non-zero net force. And it's important to notice that speed and direction are both part of velocity. So if you t if if a force causes something to turn, but it still has the same speed, we still consider that a change in velocity. So a change in direction, like force doesn't always cause things to speed up or slow down. Force sometimes just causes things to turn. This needs to be memorized. And the two last definitions are the shortest ones. We might, we're not really going to talk a lot about them today, but we need to write them down. So mass. People struggle with this because there isn't a great way to define it. It's the amount of matter in an object. It has nothing to do with weight. Weight and mass are totally different. And this, there's a lot of problems with the way we've defined this. For example, in chemistry, we have something called molecular weight, I think. Molecular weight, and they measure it in grams, which is frustrating because that's not really, that would be the molecular mass but they call it molecular weight, or maybe it's the molar weight, I forget. Um, but the point is, that's not weight. They use mass and weight interchangeably in chemistry because most of chemistry is studied just on Earth, whereas physics, we study things on multiple planets. We like to look at the way motion changes on different planets. And finally, Bill Nye says that inertia is a property of matter. That's true, but we'll take a little further. Inertia is, is an, oh, I put the parentheses in the wrong spot. Inertia is an object's resistance
to a change in motion. And these kind of go together. Mass and inertia go together. Inertia is a measurement of mass, in fact. So basically, the more mass of something is, the more challenging it is to move. So if you take a, if you consider an elephant and a dog, it's going to be harder to move the elephant than it is the dog because it is more massive. So they call this law the law of inertia because it's all about how well, like Newton's first law is all about things maintaining a constant velocity. They're either going to stay at rest or they're going to stay at their, their exact speed that they have unless there's some force. And inertia measures how well it does that. How well does that object resist a change in its velocity? Cool, I'm glad to hear it. All right, I'm going to pause. I'm going to stop it.